Hello and welcome to Hadoop Tutorials at Learning Journal. If you followed this tutorial from the beginning, you already know HDFS and its architecture. I am assuming that you have created a single node Hadoop cluster as explained in the previous video. If not, I recommend you to go back and create a Hadoop cluster because you will need access to Hadoop for this session and most of the following videos. Ok, the purpose of HDFS is to store large files. But I have two questions. How do we bring those large files into HDFS? Once our files are in HDFS, how do we perform standard file system operations on them? The answer to the first question is complicated. However, the second question is straightforward. So, let's discuss the easy thing first, the second question. Ok, the HDFS provides many interfaces to perform file system operations. I will talk about other interfaces later. But the most familiar interface for the HDFS is the command line. The HDFS offers many commands for various purposes. You can execute these commands from the Hadoop client machine. We created a single node cluster and installed everything on a single computer. The name node, data node and a Hadoop client all on the same machine. So, we will be using the same computer for our demo. But in a large Hadoop cluster, you may have some dedicated nodes as Hadoop clients. We do not install any Hadoop service on these clients. Some people refer them as the edge node. It's a very common practice to have few edge nodes in a large Hadoop cluster. The point that I am trying to make is, that while working on a large Hadoop cluster, you may not have direct access to name node or data node machines. The access is restricted to avoid unnecessary problems on those machines and for other security reasons. We purposefully create edge nodes within the Hadoop cluster and use them for day-to-day -day client operations. So, you may have access to edge nodes and you can use it to execute Hadoop commands. But for learning, we will use single node cluster. Ok, so let me show you the first command example. But before that, let me change the user to HDFS. HDFS is a super user for Hadoop. I am changing user to avoid unnecessary permission related errors. I will cover Hadoop security in a later video. But until then, let's use HDFS user. HDFS version. It is the simplest command, but it gives you a valuable information. I have Hadoop 2.7.3 and that's the latest version for Hadoop 2.x as on the date of recording. Another important command is HDFS env vars. We installed Hadoop on this machine. But if you are wondering where it resides, here it is. That's our Hadoop home directory. Let me show you another command. HDFS getconf-name nodes. This command prints the list of name nodes in the cluster. We have just one name node, so we got the name of the name node machine. So, if you notice, the Hadoop commands have following structure. The HDFS is a shell script that executes the command. The list of supported commands and their options are available in the documentation. I will introduce you to the general command structure and talk about few of them. But if you are interested, you can refer to this documentation for a complete list. We will be using some more commands from this list as we progress in the future videos. The most important command is DFS. This command allows you to perform most of the file system operations. The detailed list of supported options is listed here. Most of these options work like a Linux shell command. Let me show you the ls command.
So it lists the content of the temp directory. The first part of the output is the permissions, then the number of replicas, the user that owns the file, group name, file size, then modification date, time and file name. The entire list of these options is similar to Linux file system commands. So if you are already familiar with Linux file system commands, you just need to skim through this list quickly. This list provides you commands for most of the file system operations like copy, rename, move, delete and many more things. I leave you with this list so you can explore it yourself. There is another alternative for executing these file system commands. Instead of HDFS, you can use Hadoop. Change DFS to FS and rest remains same. So Hadoop FS is a synonym for HDFS DFS. You can use any format to execute your distributed shell commands. There is another important concept to cover at this point. The Hadoop compatible file system. The Hadoop is much more than a distributed file system. The HDFS is the distributed file system component of Hadoop. But as you progress with this training, you will learn that Hadoop is much more than HDFS. So the Hadoop supports many other file systems apart from HDFS. The point that I'm trying to make is that if you need, you can replace HDFS with some other supported file system and still use Hadoop. Some of the popular and widely used supported file systems are Amazon S3, Azure Blob Storage, Azure Data Lake Storage, OpenStax Swift Storage and Linux Local File System. Replacing HDFS with another supported file system is one aspect. The other side of the benefit is that you can access external file systems from a Hadoop cluster. The Hadoop allows you to access the data stored in any of the supported file system using a consistent method. That means the Hadoop file system commands are valid for all of the supported file systems. You can perform operations using Hadoop file system commands on any of the supported file systems. The question is how? Let me come back to the ls command to explain this. Okay, so we specified slash temp and received a list of files in HDFS. Let me change it slightly. So I added file colon double slash and it gives me a list of files from a local file system. So the Hadoop allows you to specify file path using a URI. The format of the URI is scheme authority and path. We use different scheme and authority for various file systems. For the local file system, the scheme is file colon double slash and there is no authority. For HDFS, the scheme is HDFS colon double slash, whereas the authority is the name node. So the URI for HDFS should look like this. You might be wondering that how it worked earlier without specifying the scheme and authority. It worked because we have a default file system configuration. If we don't specify any scheme, it takes the default value. You can get the default file system for your environment using a file system command that we learned earlier. Let me show you. You can also find it using Ambari. If you have your Hadoop cluster set up in AWS cloud or Azure cloud, you can access your data from the cloud storage and bring it to HDFS. However, nowadays we see Hadoop clusters with other file systems like Amazon S3 and no HDFS. 
Some people preferred S3 or Azure Data Lake storage over HDFS. We will look at those scenarios in future videos. Now we will come back to our original question. How do we bring those large files into HDFS? I guess you already learned one method to bring data into HDFS. There are some file system commands in the documentation. You can use them to bring data into HDFS. CP is a standard command to copy data from a source file system to a destination file system. Let's look at the command structure. You can specify multiple sources using URIs and one target URI. Let me show you an example. So, this command should copy file 1 and file 2 into the temp directory. Oops, error. I purposefully did that. I wanted to bring your attention back to the command structure. It takes URI. So, if I want to copy files from a local directory, I should specify a local file scheme. If I don't specify a scheme, it assumes default scheme. I need to specify an absolute path to the file. This time it's successful. So we use CP when we want to copy files from one HDFS directory to another HDFS directory or you can use them to copy data from another file system like S3 or Azure Data Lake Storage to HDFS. But when it comes to copying data from a local file system to HDFS, we prefer using copy from local or put command. Let me show you. We prefer this command due to convenience because I don't need to specify local file system scheme and absolute path to the files. We also have an append to file command which is similar to copy from local. But it appends the content of all source files to a destination file. Let me show you. Ok, you might be wondering, are these commands an answer to my original question? Well, yes and no. They give you one option, so I say yes. But they don't solve most of the real life data ingestion problems, so I said no. Let me explain the most appropriate method to use them. You can use your edge nodes as a staging location and collect your data in small to medium sized files that can fit into a single machine. Then you can use these commands to bring those files into HDFS and clean up the staging location. You can use append to file if you are willing to merge them while copying. If you have data in another distributed storage, for example S3 or Azure Data Lake storage, you may want to use cp command to bring them to HDFS. But we use them only in case of small files. Using cp to copy large files from S3 to HDFS is not recommended. We prefer dist cp tool for that purpose. I will cover dist cp in the following video. I hope you started getting a sense why I said that answer to the question is complicated. There are many tools that you can use to bring data into Hadoop and there are various considerations to select an appropriate tool. It's too early to start that kind of discussion but as we progress through the training, we will cover most of the concepts and considerations. Thank you for watching Learning Journal. Please like, subscribe and share to support us. Keep learning and keep growing.